Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, single filer, Mr. Anderson living in Beverly Hills, 90210. No W-2 income because we've got the business income coming in from the Schedule C. Let's see that flow through process. Go into the Schedule C, profit or loss from business, income statement format, income minus expenses, the net income in essence going into the Schedule 1. Going from the Schedule 1 to the Form 1040 line number 8. We're going to have to pay self-employment tax on that income. Let's see how that works. It goes from the Schedule C, bottom line, net income flowing into the schedule se self-employment tax calculating that at 14 129 that's social security and medicare we're going to go into the schedule two that's right there flows in 14 129 flows into the form 1040 page number two not the income tax but other taxes down here 14 129 the self-employment tax half of that's deductible on page one of the form 1040 right there we could see that flow through by going to the schedule c net income being used to calculate the self-employment tax of that 14 129 half of it 7065 flowing into schedule on uh, number one page number two right there and that flows into the form 1040 right here so now we've got the 100,000 minus the 7,065 gives us the 92,935 minus the 12,950 standard deduction and the 15,998, which is the qualified business income calculated by the software at this time, gives us the 63,988 taxable income tax calculated on page number two, 9,692 uh, 9, for the income tax. And the 14,129 for the self-employment tax gets us to the 23,821 total tax. We're imagining we paid 30,000 for a difference of 6,179. Our focus now on the Schedule C, imagining we now have the business use of the home. So the general scenario is we've got our own sole proprietor type of business. We have our home, which we might be renting or we might be purchased. We might have purchased the home. In either case, we use part of the home for business use. So we can imagine we have an office in some way, shape or form, some designated space that we're using within the home. Now, you would think that we would get to deduct part of the costs that are applicable to the business use of the home, considering the fact that uh, it's you had to consume that business use in order to generate revenue. The problem, that many of the expenses that you have are going to be for the entire home. So they're personal and business. Therefore, we need to be breaking out the business versus personal portion. How could you do that? Well, we can do that possibly with a ratio kind of scenario, meaning we can take the square footage of the business use and divide that by the square footage of the total home and get a ratio, a percent in essence, that we can then uh, allocate these costs by we can use the form uh, 8829 which we will take a look at let's open that up we can also use by the way a simplified method which may be okay to use but may be low as well depending on where you live if you live in like a high cost of living area you're likely not going to want to use the simplified method because your your cost of living is going to be higher and so that might be short also note that the deduction is flowing down here and that's kind of an indication that and the reason they might do that or put it down here as opposed to up top is because there could be limitations in terms of how much you can deduct in the event that you have a loss uh, situation. So if you have a loss, remember that if you have a loss here, that could pull to page one of the 1040 and be deductible against other income such as W-2 income if you had any. And that could cause, you know, issues. The IRS is skeptical of that. So you might have limitations with regards to the losses. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and open up the form 8829. So I'm gonna open that one up. Let's find that over here. So here's the basic layout. We've got the form 8829, business uh, expenses for business use of the home. Home? 
part one, part of your home used for business, and then figure your allowable deduction. Notice the two categories we have here, the direct expenses and uh, the indirect expenses for the business use of the home. Let's jump on over. Let's see if I can do a jumping format here and go to the business use of the home. Okay, so, so if we're gonna use the percentage square footage method, what we would basically need to do is say, okay, the business use of the home, I'll, I'll pull out my trusty ruler and map out the square footage of the business area. And let's say that that comes out to, uh, let's say that comes out to 700, let's say, let's say 300. And the total area of the home, which you might be able to find when you purchase the home, the square footage, you might be able to look it up online and see what the like square footage of, of the home is. But you have to find the square footage of the home. If you're renting, obviously, you can you could you could look at the rental uh, agreement possibly to find the square footage of the home or look up online for the standard unit size of the home and whatnot so we've got our two major categories the indirect expenses and the direct expenses so the general idea would be if it's an indirect expense we're paying for something like the utility bill for example on the entire home and part of it should be allocated to the business use and that's when we're going to have to use that percentage kind of method to do that if it's a direct expense that might be something that we're paying for directly to the office so for example if we're paying like repairs and maintenance for like the entire roof of the building then you would think that you would have to use an indirect method and you would have to allocate it between the business and personal but if you're doing repairs and maintenance for the actual office itself then then you don't have to do the allocation method because you're repairing the actual office which is full business use in in that case so that's the general idea note that up top we've got the mortgage interest and the real estate taxes now and this and the uh, state mortgage interest now these are going to be deductions if you have the purchase of the home and they also become more confusing because you may be able to deduct these items on the schedule a if you're taking the itemized deduction so then you got to think about whether or not they should be allocated between itemized deductions and the uh, business deductions if you're not taking them on the schedule a then you would think that you might get a benefit from them on uh, the business side because you're not taking them on the schedule a because possibly you have standard deductions that you're taking as opposed to itemized but if someone owns a home usually that's one of the big items that pushes people over from the standard deduction to uh, taking the itemized deduction and then you run into that issue also mortgage interest from an itemized deduction schedule a standpoint is could be limited if the loan is over a, a certain threshold which could further complicate things usually would only happen on more wealthy individuals same with state taxes for example which are capped on the itemized deductions i think at like ten thousand so then again that kind of complicates things uh, as well with the state taxes but let's first think about the the renting situation because i think that's a little bit easy easier so you've got uh insurance miscellaneous the rent let's say we're paying rent and let's say that that's going to be let's just pick a number of twenty thousand in rent now the the repairs and maintenance this would be if the repairs and maintenance were on the entire home like the roof of the entire home and i need to allocate them between the two so let's say that's 1200 utilities let's say that's 700 uh on the whole home and excess mortgage interest state excess more uh excess real estate taxes and other items and then on, on the direct items 